Hey Algebra 2 students, we are in section 13.2. So I've copied the key concept on your page um, 859 in your Algebra 2 book. If we follow along, let's go over this together. In a coordinate plane, an angle can be formed by fixing one ray called the initial side and rotating the other ray called the terminal side. An angle is in standard position if its vertex is at the origin and its initial side lies on the positive axis. So we're going to first notice that the initial side right here lies on the positive x-axis. Swinging counterclockwise gives us an angle. That angle, then the other ray, is the terminal side. The vertex has to be at zero, zero. Now every, for example, every like axis that you go is 90 degrees. So 90, 180, 270, 360. So that's the basics of angles in a standard position. Notice that standard position. The initial side can go other places, but if it's in standard position, the initial side will always be here, the positive x-axis. In example one, which once again is on page 859, draw an angle with a given measure in standard position. The first thing I'm going to do is draw a coordinate plane. Now you have to go 240 degrees. Now 240 degrees, I'm going to mark this in, let's do blue. So once again, our initial side always has to start here on the x-axis. This is standard position. So if I go this way, I'm going to go always counterclockwise. If it's positive, you're going to go counterclockwise. 90 degrees, 180, but we want to go 240. This is 270. So 240 is less than 270. So here's what I do. How far past 180 is 240? Well, 240 minus 80, 180, is 60. So you're going to go 60 more degrees this way, and that's going to give you your angle. So the red, which I'm going to darken here, this right here, this whole angle, that is 240. That's really, it's going to be 240. And then in green, I'm going to indicate how far past the 180 I went. Well, I went 60 degrees past the 180 degrees to get 240. So let's go to B, which is 500. 500. Well, a full circle is 360 degrees. So if we start this, our angle, we start with our, the initial side. So I'm going to start with 360, because we know we go 360. But then 360, just keep adding increments of 90. 360 plus 90 is how much? It would be 450 degrees. So I only need to go 50 more degrees this way. So my other angle is going to be right there. The blue angle is the angle of 500 degrees. That's 500. That's the red. Now if you wanted to, we always draw how many degrees past the x-axis. So this is where it gets confusing. We know that it's only 50 degrees past this y-axis right here. But we never use the y-axis. We always use either this x-axis over here on the right or on the left. So we have to know how many degrees did I go around from here? How many degrees is this? You'll notice on the first problem, I started at this side of the x-axis, so I went down. How many degrees did you go down past? It was 60 degrees. Over here, I already went 360. How many degrees past 360 is 500? Well, 500 minus 360 is 140. So the actual angle that you drew is 140 degrees. 
It's confusing. I know it's confusing. But the more you practice and the more you study, the easier it will get. So now we're going to go negative 50. Negative 50, we still start here our initial side. Negative angles go clockwise. They go the opposite way. So negative 50 is only going to be going down 50 degrees. So negative 50 degrees. And so that right there would be negative 50 degrees. Now there's a reason why I drew, I drew the angles in the green. In example one, part B, 500 degrees and 140 are the exact same angle. That's because they're coterminal. Their terminal sides coincide. Now here's what it means. You're like, I don't get it. Your terminal sides, your terminal sides once again, Remember, your initial side is the x-axis. The terminal side is the other side. 140's terminal angle, terminal side, and 500's angle, the terminal side, are the same. That's why they're coterminal. An angle coterminal with a given angle can be found by either subtracting or adding multiples of 360. So now we're going to use those coterminal angles. In example two, we're going to find one positive and one negative sing. This should say negative angle, not single. All right, let's try that again. Find one positive and one negative angle that are coterminal with A, 45 degrees, that's negative, and B, 395 degrees. So A, negative 45 degrees. Remember, all you have to do to find coterminal angles is either add multiples of 360 or by subtracting multiples of 360. So, if it's negative right now, we need to find one negative and one positive angle. So if I add 360, negative 45 degrees plus 360 degrees would give me 350 degrees. So that obviously is a positive angle. So now let's subtract negative 45 degrees minus 360 degrees. That gives me negative 405 degrees. Therefore, you just found two coterminal angles, one positive and one negative, of negative 45 degrees. Let's try B, 395 degrees. If I have 395 degrees, I subtract 360 that gives me 35 degrees. So there's my positive. But I need to have a negative. So if I subtract 360, that's 35. I'm going to subtract again. So if I subtract 360, I get 35, but that's still not negative. So I'm going to subtract 360 degrees again, and that gives me negative 325 degrees. Remember, you can subtract and add 365 degrees as many times as you want until you get a positive and a negative angle that's coterminal to the original one. That's all it is. Now, let me just show you how this looks to give you a visual. If I'm looking at this, 300, I'm sorry, yeah, 395 degrees. 395 degrees, well, this is 360. 360 plus another 35, that angle right there, that blue angle, that is my 395 degrees. But wait a minute. What's this angle right here? There's your 35 degrees. It's the same thing as the blue angle. And my negative, negative 325, well, if I start here and I go negative, negative is going the opposite way, so I'm going to go this way, negative 325 degrees. Negative 325 degrees goes the opposite way. It gives you the exact same angle. So you'll notice that this angle, which I'm going to highlight in black, so let me, let me darken this. This angle here, that's your angle. You can get there by going positive 35 degrees, negative 325 degrees, and it's still the same thing as 395 degrees. So they are all coterminal. All right, so now I'm at the bottom of page 860, 
this is the part that radiance confuses kids. It honestly just confuses students. They don't understand it. So we're going to take this a little slow. And it's really not that hard once you get the hang of it. So degrees to radiance. You should know that 180 degrees is the same thing as pi. So if you are going from degrees to radians, you're basically multiplying by the fraction pi over 180. If you're going from radians to degrees, you're going to multiply by 180 over pi. So let's do an example. We are first just going to go and convert 125 degrees. Let me change my font size. All right. So 125 degrees, that's degrees. Here's what I want you to think of. Let's do a conversion. I do a big like fraction bar plus sign type thing. And what I do is this. This is what I always did when I was a student. I want to get rid of 125 degrees. I want to cancel out degrees. So like when you do a fraction, when you multiply fractions, anything on top cancels with anything on bottom. Right now, I have a degree on top. I want to get rid of degrees. So that means I need degrees on bottom. So basically, that's 180 degrees and pi. That's a conversion. What I'm doing is this. Degrees to radians. I multiply 125. This really is a fraction. 125 times pi over 180. All I then do is multiply. 125 times pi is 125 pi. 180. Notice I no longer have degrees because anything divided by itself cancels. So did the degrees both cancel. So now I have 125 pi over 180, which I can simplify. So what goes into 125 pi and 180? It'd be 5. So if I divide by 5, divide by 5, 125 pi divided by 5 gives me 25 pi. 180 divided by 5 gives me 36. Therefore, my answer is 25 pi over 36. Let's try another one. I want to convert negative pi over 12. Now, obviously, that's radians because there's a pi in there. So I want to get rid of that. So I'm going to multiply by pi on bottom, 180 on top. Because I'm going from radians to the degrees, I want the pi's to cancel. They're gone. So then you multiply. Negative times 180 is negative 180. 12 times nothing gives me 12. You then take negative 180, divide it by 12, and that's going to give you degrees of negative 15. So my answer is negative 15 degrees. Let's try a couple more examples just so you understand what you're doing. Let's do 135 degrees, negative 50 degrees, 5 pi over 4 degrees, and pi divided by 10. So the first two are degrees. So here's what I did as a student. I drew a plus sign. I have to get rid of degrees. So that means I want radians divided by 180. My degrees cancel. So that gives me 135 pi divided by 180. Well, what can, you, what can be simplified? 135 and 180 can both be divided by 45. And if you don't see that, you could divide by 5 first and then go from there. So 135 divided by 45 gives me 3 pi. 180 divided by 45 gives me 4. My answer is 3 pi divided by 4. 50 degrees. I'm going from degrees to radians, so I'm going to times by pi divided by 180. Degrees cancel. That gives me negative 50 pi divided by 180. I can divide top and bottom by 10. That will give me negative 5 pi divided by 18. 5 pi divided by 4. Now I have pi. So the pi goes on the bottom, the degrees goes on top. Pi's cancel. 5 times 180, you could do that and then divide by 4, or you can say, well, 4 goes into itself once, 
4 goes into 180, so 180 divided by 4, that gives you 45. So you could take 5 times 45, and that'd be degrees, and that'd give you 225 degrees. Pi divided by 10, I'm going to multiply by 180 divided by pi. Pi's cancel. 10 goes into 10 once, 10 goes into 180 18 times, so if I multiply straight across, that gives me 18 degrees. The last key concept is on page 861, and that talks about arc length and area of a sector. So the first thing you have to realize is what, are, what is all this vocab? What does it mean? Arc length is the length of the arc. Pretty self-explanatory. The blue region is called the sector. R is obviously the radius. And the angle, the central angle, is the angle that's made by the sector. So to find the arc length, you have to take S equals R, which is your radius, times theta, which is the angle. Your central angle is theta, and your radius is R. The area is one half of the radius squared times the angle measure, which is theta. So using the formula you just learned, it says softball. A softball field forms a sector with the dimensions shown. Find the length of the outfield fence and the area of the field. Now this is a lot easier than, than you think. The first thing we have to know is the arc length. Well, we want to find the length of the outfield fence. Well, that's this. That's the arc length. The formula for arc, arc, bleh, arc length is S equals R times theta. So S equals, the R is just the radius. Your radius is 180 times theta, which is your 90 degrees. That's your central angle. So 180 times 90 degrees. Now, before you do anything else, there's a rule that you must know that 90 degrees is completely illegal. Theta must be measured radians. So your angle measure, whatever the angle is, and in this case 90 degrees, must be radians. So you have to take your 90 degrees and you have to convert it by multiplying by pi over 180. So 90 divided by 180, this is just like multiplying two fractions. 90 goes into itself once, goes into 180 twice, so your radians would be pi divided by 2. That is going to be plugged in for 90 degrees. So we're going to have 180 times pi divided by 2. So 180 pi divided by 2, it's 180 divided by 2. It's going to be 90 pi. Now the distance of something, you're not going to tell someone, oh, what's the distance of the outfield fence? Oh, it's 90 pi. You're not going to say that. So you're going to take 90 times pi and approximate that as 283, and we're talking about feet. So the outfield fence is approximately 283 feet. Now we need to find the area of the field. Well, the area is the formula 1 half the radius squared times theta, which is the central angle in radians. So we know 1 half. The radius is 180 degrees squared. Theta, we already know, is pi divided by 2. So you take 180 times 180, take half, and then divide it by 2. So I'm going to do that right now. So 180 squared, 180 squared gives you 32,400. We have to divide that by 2. That gives you 16,200. But then we have another divide by 2, since it's pi divided by 2. That gives you 8,100 pi. But now you take 8,100 times 3.14. And that gives you approximately 25,000, if you round it to three digits, 400 squared feet.